normal distribution simulation. Consider the problem. We know that some set of data behaves such that the underlying structure of it is that it is normally distributed with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. How can we simulate this data set? Most science calculators have a function called RAND. This function, when called, gives the user a random number between 0 and 1. It is uniformly distributed. That is, any number could appear with equal probability, between 0 and 1 of course. But how, using this random function, could we produce a standard normal distribution of mean 0 and standard deviation 1? We use what is known as the Box-Muller transform. This is the way to transform the function RAND into a function that produces a random number with mean 0 and standard deviation 1, normally distributed. The Box-Muller transform of the uniform random variable RAND is square root minus 2 log RAND cos 360 RAND. This will generate a normally distributed data set with mean 0 and standard deviation 1. We use degrees mode for cos and in fact it will be fine to use sine instead of cos if we so choose. Now that we have a way to generate our normally distributed data set with mean 0 and standard deviation 1, we now need to convert this into a normally distributed data set with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. Recall the set transformation takes us from a mu sigma bell curve to a 0, 1 bell curve. Therefore, the inverse of this operation is what we require. Z equals x minus mu over sigma. Bringing the sigma up to the left and taking the mu over to the left, we arrive at the result that x equals mu plus sigma z. Hence, if Z follows a 0, 1 bell curve, then mu plus sigma Z will follow a mu sigma bell curve. Let's look at an example. The time spent online by university students follows a bell curve. It is found that the mean of students is 4 hours of time spent online per day. It is also found that the standard deviation is half an hour. Suppose you are a lecturer with 25 students in class. Simulate what a data set may look like with mean and standard deviation of 4 and 0 0.5 respectively. What is the difference between the person that spends the most time online and the person who spends the least time online per day in your data set? Shown is the RAND button on our calculator. By using the random button shown we can type in square root minus 2 log RAND cos 360 RAND and type this in 25 times and we will produce 25 normally distributed terms with mean 0 and standard deviation 1. They are as follows. Now we shall apply the inverse set transformation we found earlier to transform them into having a mean of 4 and standard deviation of 0 0.5. We shall also put them in descending order. Shown are the numbers transformed. The largest number first 
and the smallest number last. The difference between the largest number and the smallest number is approximately 2.02 hours. This represents the difference between the person who spends the most time online and the person who spends the least amount of time online. Let's look at another example. Consider a random variable n. It follows a bell curve. It has mean 0 and standard deviation 1. Suppose we have two cases of observations. Case 1 is 10 observations of n and case 2 is 20 observations of n. Do you think case 1, case 2 or both will have an average of 0? If not, why not? Support your answer. It can be numerically or empirically rather than algebraically. By using the random button again and the box Mueller transform we can produce 10 observations of n. It will follow from the 0 1 bell curve pattern. After this we will do it again but 20 times to get 20 observations of n. Here is case 1, 10 simulated observations of n. Here is case 2, 20 simulated observations of n. In case 1, if we were to take the average, we would have 0 0.639. In case 2, if we were to take the average, we would have minus 0 0.009. As you can see, we have two different averages. This is because the average or sample mean is only estimating the true mean. The more observations we make of a random variable, then the more we can know about it. In this case, the mean. Note how much closer case 2 is to the true mean of 0, whereas case 1 is further away. This is not accidental. This is because case 2 has more observations than case 1.